custom made, brother. Yeah. No, I didn't buy this and I didn't uh, drink it either. And if you know what that bag is. Duty free bag. I uh, got two days work at a place that, uh, well, it was this customer that was just referred to me by my uh, normal employer. Made $470 in two days. Yeah, 470 in two days. Just moving around boxes and uh, a few other bits and pieces, a few heavy things I had to deal with, exercise bikes, blah, blah, blah. Done it all on my own. The um, guy had his own van as part of a business he owned. Um, and uh, they were definitely custom made. And uh, it's, in a particular well known joint um, in the capital, it's not actually a gated community. Although you will see parts that do have gates, and I think there are a couple of parts that actually are physically gated communities in it, like about two or three parts, maybe four parts. Um, but the main entrance you can drive in without a problem. It's intriguing because it's not... We don't generally have gated communities over here, but they have a body corporate which, A, has ground maintenance, and you see at least four light trucks and eight guys running around just messing with the um, trees next to the sidewalk and putting more mulch on them and playing around with stuff, and they have their own garbage collection service, and... Um, they also have their own security guards that drive around all night long and basically a car will go past your house every 10 minutes. Um, in the master bedroom, something like 80-90% of these places are double story. In the master bedroom, beside where you would put your bed, they have this little red button and I said, what's that about? That's a direct line from every house to the security uh, so that if things turn to shit or someone turns up and causes a lot of shit uh, or you're fearful that you can hear someone breaking in downstairs, you push that button and security will be there within about three minutes flat. Um, and it's funny, the security guards, their uniforms are the same colour as cop uniforms. And occasionally you'll see them driving around anyway, but they drive around all night long and they'll go past your house every 10 minutes. Um, that service costs, to have all that, it, it depends on the size of your house. It's anything from 1300 to $2,500 a year. Uh, and you have to pay that to the body corporates. Uh, they also have their own golf club. They also have their own social club. And I think a, yeah, like a enclosed swimming pool um, and uh, I think pool tables and probably tennis as well I'm not certain about the tennis but I did definitely see the the big social clubhouse and um, the golf course now intriguingly enough they uh, not surprisingly they do have security cameras as you drive in and out of this place but it's a little bit different from most places security wise because there's only one entry and one exit everything surrounding it is all swamp land so you can't just crash through a fence and drive off with a 4x4 because you will just be straight in a swamp uh, and on top of that <coughs> the one side that doesn't uh, have it there is a creek further up but you could probably get out of it on one side but the majority of it uh, you couldn't get out of because it's all swampland. And the only real place to get in and out, there's only one entry and exit point. Um, and it has a huge artificial lake, uh, which I saw 
where they have sort of a moat thing set up where it actually the lake slowly flows out to it's got like a bit of a almost like it's basically a sort of an embankment thing and once water gets to a certain point it, it continuously flows out uh, into these swamps but on that artificial lake there is about four, five, six islands um, and some of those are sort of gated off and of course you can't really break away from those without <laughs> going into the lake um, and yeah no fishing on the lake, no swimming in it, but a lot of people have kayaks and stuff like that. And some people, they don't even have a lawn. They've got a double story house and entirely surrounding it is sand straight onto the edge of this lake. And they even have little jetties too to, you know, mount their little sailboats and kayaks off. It's not terribly deep, but having said that, it's probably... There'd be parts that'll probably be just about up to my neck, I reckon. Um, yes, anyway, the uh, <laughs> average house price there is about $700,000. Uh, and rent, you will never rent a place. Most places there are about six eighty a week rent. You'll never rent a place any less than 550 a week there. Um, which, in terms of where it is and what it offers, that's actually reasonably good price rent-wise compared to the surrounding areas, uh, which are not much flame and cheaper, but minus all the security guards and the lake and all the other fan dangles. And the cat needs to get off the bloody stove, you bugger. Anyways, without further ado, I'll go ahead and I'll show you some of the lake and, and the scenery around the place, and uh, yeah. Okay, I've got here excessively early, like about an hour and a half early. Um, see here is an artificial lake. And it does look a lot nicer over there. As you might be able to see, there's actually a bridge there. And all these houses here are technically speaking on an island. Now, this is an artificial lake. Um, I'm pretty certain this area is full of clay, so this would all be bought in sand too. Actually, I'm certain the damn area is clay because they used to have to dig <laughs> foundation holes for bloody pergolas around here. Yes, that is a black swan. A few more up there, a couple on the water. Hmm, there's a couple over there too. If I'm not incorrect, this has actually been raked. The lines, you can see where they curve around the corner and do a loop back. So this has entirely been raked. There's the swan prints. Something else from the swan. When you look at this on Google Earth, it's, uh, you keep going right around here and there's more uh, houses out on islands and stuff like that. I'll be screwed, this guy here in this house, he's got a little jetty and a couple of little bloody plastic kayaks or something on his own jetty. <laughs> in the back of all this, it's sort of over there, there's a natural creek that's uh, been there for many, many years. Um, although I believe all of this is fed entirely by rainwater, and so a lot of the stormwater drains in the area mm. come into here, which is explain how they get rid of all the stormwater, those who aren't already putting it in the water tanks. Um, even areas like this, they will have stormwater uh, collection tanks, or rainwater collection tanks. Um, I really don't know how they move the sewage out of this area. But then again, you know, it is an artificial lake and they probably just dug this out and didn't touch that. 
but then there's a little bridge that enters it so they'd have to have some sort of a pipe going under there to uh, carry it or something don't know don't really want to know I got my car sitting over there, the keys in the ignition, you don't even worry about it in this area this is the sort of joint where if you had an iPhone 5 they wouldn't pill for it but if you had an iPhone 6 then they might only because it's an iPhone 6 <laughs> Swimming is not recommended in this lake. This lake is classified for aesthetic value and recreational opportunities only. So you can do boating, you can do wading, walk in it to cool your feet but not swim in it. Hmm. Oh yeah, in case you didn't see it, there's a giant water fountain there. And that's what you see, that through there is the entrance and that's what you... Uh, so as you come in the entrance is this huge big uh, burst of water spraying up in the air um, yeah, this goes back to grass and I've got a car over there even at the once you get through the other side of these houses um, there's a um, another major road that runs through the back of all this and you hit a roundabout and as you come out of that roundabout there's a like three small water fountains all in a row uh, all together and then you go through about what about a hundred yards and hit another roundabout and hit this road here this a little truck over there that is actually a grocery delivery truck for people who are too slack to go to the store and buy their groceries they just order them online and they come out and deliver it so that's a dude obviously doing his rounds there. So, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. There's another area further up I just went past. I think it's a gated community. It's like fully friggin' electric gates with RFID cards to get in and everything. But anyway, I might as well show you guys this one. It's electric barbecues as well, all stainless steel. Oh, they're probably electric. They used to have propane ones, yeah, electricity meter, this would just be straight electric. Yeah, I can tell with the, um, you can see by the shape of it, that's where the knife run goes. Yeah, electric barbecue. Push button. And then it'll run for a certain amount of time. And push that one's button too. <laughs> I want a stainless steel bench just part and parcel of living here. I mean, actually, even that's part and parcel of the local government where I live provides a similar sort of thing, but uh, in that market area, of course, they're going to provide it if they provide it in a uh, area out in the country. But, ooh, I might keep driving around anyway. Alrighty, we're going over one of these little bridges. We've got some strange looking line lying down in the water there. If I'm not incorrect, that's... What the hell is that? <laughs> it's not a dredging rig. Um... Pull off into another area here. Um... In behind us all is just all bloody swampland. Holy smoke. Just a few too many large trucks. I think they might be doing some earthworks. Ooh. As you can see, all this is all double story, whole blasted way. All double story. Except that one. That's just what it's like in a lot of these. In the back there. And you see through there, that's all just swampland. Um, yeah. That's bloody crap actually back there. And we come back through again to the lake. I'm trying to get to pull off here again. I don't think it's coming up my friggin' ass all the damn time. And Oh, God. 
Yeah, she's Mercedes Benz and Range Rover country out here. No question on that. I'm actually surprised the amount of blocks here that are still uh, just vacant with salt signs on them. As I said, like this has been here for more than five years, and you would have expected a bit more uh, to be, you know, you wouldn't expect any empty ones, you know, after five years, but. Um, I don't bother showing the uh, local gardener there. I'll flip around through here, get a better look at all this crap. Mm. There we go, there's the lake. There's a bloody big heap. But as a whole, I don't think there's any one position you can see it from as a whole. There's a, more sand there. There you go, a little bridge here, a bit more. It's very defined if you look above uh, on, on Google Earth, um, what's sort of technically in the water, so to speak, and what's not. Just trying to... Oh, there we go. That's all gated off. I believe it's all blooming swipe card entry. Mm. Oh shit, I might have just run yourself into a uh, dead end here. Yeah, I did too. There's a joint there. Been put up, double story. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a three point turn here. Brand new joint beside it, it's completely empty. Right behind me, you can see in the mirror, that's the lake again. <coughs> eh, it's one of these houses on the, one of the main runs down here, they've got to move crap out of. I've drove past it before going by the numbers and I didn't even blame and notice it, but. Uh, Now that actually does go over a bridge that goes over the uh, lake again there, so I don't know what's with the lock and all that up. Show you. Here we go. There, a lot of this in the back here is untouched swamp uh, sort of stuff. A lot of reeds and rubbish. But uh, yeah, it gives you a good look right through. This is probably the longest point I'd say to look through it. Uh, a lot of double story joints. It's probably another island there, basically. I get a feeling there's actually a golf course in the back here, so which sort of makes a lot of sense when push comes to shove. Anyway, um, that all this sort of stuff has golf courses. I did actually see a couple of guys playing previously. So, yeah. so anyway, keep moving. So all the yeah uh, swamp style stuff. There's a bunch flowing out to out into the swamp. I don't know what that's all about. It's, uh, yeah, not all of it. Sort of, you know, once you get to the edge of it, you see the swamp land. And this has probably been swamp, and they've been playing with it, you know, to create higher parts and, and the lower part, obviously, is your artificial lake. But, um, yeah. Trouble sometimes is going to get the camera out. By the time you get it out, you're flipping driven past half of it. So some lovely buildings along here, all of them, and heaps of them double story and stuff like that. What the hell's going on there? 
maybe a removal is badly needed to uh, do something or someone needed to vacate real quick by looks there. <laughs> Tree-lined suburbs. There he is all locked up in there again. I've seen two others that are one side by side, not even anything to do with the islands or anything that are all blooming locked up. One's the medallion, is what it's called, and the other one's called uh, some other shit I can't remember. There's actually guys who look after the gardens here and they've got the blooming estate name stuck on the door of the, uh, the truck. There's another one, Jardin. And uh, there's quite a few of them getting around. I've seen at least blooming four trucks and about eight or ten guys already. So, Light trucks are just little friggin' Toyota Hiluxes. can tell by the uh, purple piping they're using in this, a whole lot of those are using recycled water which is probably grey water to water all these, so all you're worried about grey water, that's probably exactly what is being used to water all these trees here so uh, yeah Woo! yeah you ham and eggers looks a lot brighter to me but of course this camera is always crap. Uh, done eight and a half hours driving back now. I tell you what they were custom made these people out of one double story house into another double story house. I've got to go back tomorrow uh, and then he's got some other guys um, from another removalist joint coming uh, with a four ton truck and we're going to load some of the heavier stuff in um, these guys are custom made alright run two small businesses now and I noticed some of the gear we were moving I asked her about it because I was pretty sure I was seeing what I thought I was seeing DVD copiers like multi stack ones that you can load 50 DVDs into at once uh, and you know, it'll just sit there copying several at a time and work its way down through a stack of 50. Um, and yeah, I was right, that's exactly what it was. They've come from New Zealand where, long story short, they had a major operation basically pirating Bollywood movies because they're Indians. They ran 16, that's right, Elvis Travels. 16 shops selling Bollywood DVDs. They get the relatives to send an original over from India and they just sit there pumping them through these DVD copying machines um, of which they own, well, I saw at least two and what I thought was even a third one that was a newer, more updated version. And they've uh, actually sold that operation uh, and then moved to Australia. Um, a little while back and uh, yeah <laughs> 16 shops I mean that is that's making a go of life and uh, all out of a few DVD copying uh, towers and um, a bunch of uh, one or two particular relatives back in India who keep sending them all the latest stuff <laughs> 